now that we have a very basic spawning system so that way we can you know we'll spawn at a random point what i want to do to really kind of kind of really give us a base to kick off that we're going to be using for a ton of other features is make a simple ai that is going to well, all it's going to do is follow the players so i want to go ahead and get on this early so that way we just have like i said a very simple ai that's going to follow players that's going to be kind of our zombie base class or we might depending on how it's not going to be that complicated since it's just going to be following the nearest person and trying to hit them but this will allow us to really kind of easily build on our point system testing out our weapons system and all that kind of stuff so that way we can make sure all of that all the basic stuff that we need to do works so in order to do that i'm going to go ahead and create our zombie class so do it under game now let's create a new i want to make a new folder it's going to be of character go to next let's call it zombie base and i'm going to do forward slash nazi zombie forward slash zombies or zombie and create class And the next video, we will be covering actually making our zombie follower player. But for now, we're just going to do the basic setup. Go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and set up the CPP. We don't need any inputs, so I'm going to go ahead and remove our player input or our setup input component. Going to remove on tick because I do not want anything to be running on tick. We're going to create a timer for that that controls uh, switching between what players to attack and that sort of thing. And now let's just set the include. So project name, public. Nazi zombie, zombie, zombie base. That each. That should be it. I'm gonna go ahead and compile because the path looks good. Make sure this works. And we're going to create a blueprint class off of this. So I'm probably going to have to relaunch the editor. All right. And then we're going to create the navigation mesh for it. Okay, go ahead and create the blueprint class derived from it. It's going to be BP underscore zombie base. Just going to put it in blueprint classes, make a new folder, call it zombie, and throw it in there. Now for the mesh, we're going to set the mannequin. The animation class is going to be the that's not that one. Third person animation blueprint. Let's go ahead and position him. Make sure he's following the error component and it needs to come up by about five units. And I believe that's pretty much flush. Now, let's see. Is it the scale of him that's off? Let me check real quick. I got a player. Or is it the capsule? 
Okay, so it's just the capsule that's a good bit smaller. But it kind of actually works well. So I think I'm going to leave the capsule size the same. And here soon we'll probably end up changing the capsule size of our own player to kind of be a little bit more in line with this because it suits it a little better. Okay. So we have our base. So anytime he moves, he should be having the same animations and all that kind of stuff as normal. Now we need to create our navigation mesh. So if we go to place actors, volumes, nav mesh bounce volume, drag it over here. And if you don't, oops, if you don't see uh, the green, if you just press P, it toggles it on and off. And you can just go about and scale the volume. So I'm going to scale it to fit. Go from the top. And just get it roughly in there. So that's covering pretty much all the movable grounds that I would want. That's all we really need, honestly. So we are good to go there. Let's head back to our zombie base class. And it should have the AI controller set by default. Once I can find it. Oh, I clicked mesh, that's why. So AI to controller class, AI controller. Uh, I don't think we're going to really have any need to write a custom AI controller. So it might just leave it the same. But we are pretty much good to go. We have our base setup that we have done. The only thing that would be left, go ahead and just press now leave it up. I think that would really be left would be to make it so it follows our player around. That won't be that difficult. I'll show you how to do that in the next one. So I'll see you then.